Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, ha ha, challenge in pronunciation, Izzy Gozel, did I get it right? You did. Ah, Izzy Gozel is going to help us use improv theater techniques to make our programs more engaging. Now, we'd like to get to know Izzy a little bit better at a personal level, and to that end, I have four questions. Izzy, question number one, what's the best decision that you have ever made? To leave my career as a special education teacher and try stand-up comedy. Ah, I'm glad it panned out for you. Number two, what are the top qualities that attract you to people? Uh, curiosity, uh, communication, and a sense of humor. Well, I, I, I get about two of those, maybe. Question number three, what impact would you like your life to have on planet Earth? I'd like to know that people found value from um, my work and being around them. That, that they gain something that they could take away. That's my legacy. Good, so far so good? Great. Yeah. And the fourth question and last question is, what's one of your favorite quotes and why? When I was studying comedy writing in New York, um, I was a good writer, but I was always afraid of reforming. I was afraid I'd forget and look stupid and. So I asked my comedy writing teacher, how do you overcome your fear of coming up on stage? And he said, you don't overcome your fear. You bring it with you. That's what people are interested in. Ah. And that has really helped me be humble and also to recognize that it's the struggle in our lives that connect us, not the fact that one person has succeeded because it's easier to relate to the struggle. Oh, that's very profound. Thank you. Thank you for sharing those with us, Izzy. Now, participants, a few messages for you. Uh, please turn on your video. Uh, in other words, come on camera, because Izzy is going to get his energy from you. And if what he sees is a black box with a name in the middle of it, that's not very energizing from his point of view. So please try and come on camera. Uh, stay muted, and uh, if, you <coughs> if you have any questions, please type them into the chat. Uh, I will aggregate them, and at about every 10 minutes, I will stop Izzy and pose all your questions to him. Rest assured, you're going to get all your questions answered by the end of Izzy's workshop. Now, this uh, workshop is going to be recorded, and you'll be sent a link to the recording. It'll probably be tomorrow. Uh, okay, those are all my messages. Izzy, are you ready to knock our socks off? I think so, yes. Right. The show is all yours. I'm going to come off Spotlight. And okay. you, can share, you can now share your slides whenever you want. I will do that. And uh, thank you, Roger, and thank you all for, for, for being here. Um, the first thing I'd like to ask you to do, actually, let me give you a little bit of an understanding of where I'm coming from. The idea is about engagement, and, and, and my work is as a facilitator, a keynote speaker, a coach. So I, I, I work with a lot of meetings, a lot of groups, and I found that for myself, when I'm in a group, a meeting, I tend to drift. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bright, shiny object guy. The challenge has been to how do you keep keep people engaged, both in person or online or in a person-to-person uh, -person communication. And what I found is that um, improv theater principles, not the improv theater outcome, which is comedy, but the practice that improv people use to get to the end result, which is thinking on their feet, working together, problem solving, not being stuck to any particular outcome, being able to pivot quickly and be able to uh, co-create a solution that may not be evident is a skill that has never been more relevant than it is right now. So the, the premise of our time together today is I'd like to show you how 
uh, the 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 skills that make improv people successful have um, relevance to you in your essentially your your programming, your communication, and not surprisingly your personal development, because it takes a certain amount of a ability to be imperfect and vulnerable to, to do improv. To tell you the truth, it takes a certain amount of vulnerability and humility to live our lives. So the question is, how do we let go of things we cannot control and act on things we can control? So let's get started. So all I'm gonna ask you to do, and there will be times I may ask for volunteers, but all I, I'm gonna ask you to do is monitor your self-talk and see how your thinking drives your behavior and how it may or may not equate to the outcome. The first thing I'd like you to do is um, into the chat, um, I'd like you to tell us something about yourself that most people don't know. And I want you to do it in exactly six words. I don't want five words. I don't want seven, eight, nine, ten 10 words. In exactly six words, tell us something about yourself that most people don't know and put it into the chat. If I, and I'll do that also. So um, and when you're, yeah. <laughs> Real surgery, wow. Oh, sorry, Raj, yeah. So look, look, look at what we have in, in, in there. Um, <laughs> so here, here let, let, let's go to, to the topic here. So, so let, let, let me bring up the slides here. I wanna share screen. Um, and where is it? Here it is. What I'd like to ask you to do. So, what was your thinking when I told you the assignment? And you could either put it in chat or you can uh, unmute and just just call out the answer. I'd like I'd like to hear the answers. Um, wh when I gave you the assignment, the suggestion, what were you thinking? Uh, you have to unmute so I can hear you. Something fun to share. Something fun. Yeah. What else? Uh, life is, go ahead. I was hard it is to write it in six words. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the restriction. So, so this is a, an activity I use very often to engage my participants. I use this sometimes before the meeting or before the conference, rather than sending out a survey by itself. I will say to some to the people, give us six words about something that most people don't know about you or six words about why you're coming to the program or what you hope to get out of it. And what that does is start engaging the people right away. People are engaged and the benefit to you as a presenter is that you people who come early can, can put it into the chat. People who come later can uh, put it into the chat. And what you begin to understand is that the restriction in improv, because all improv games have restriction attached to them, it's the restriction that leads to creativity. So the idea is, is that we're going to examine how the structure of improv is engagement. The other piece is that boundaries are guidelines. People think, well, if only six words, I, I'm limited. I want seven words, 10 words, 1,000 words. The guidelines are serve like the banks of a river. It's the banks of the river that allow the create the, the creative water to flow. If there were no banks, if there were no guidelines, if there were no restrictions, we'd be all over the place. So in terms of helping people think and helping people move towards a goal, the restrictions lead to the creativity. And then the third piece here is that you notice you, you, you talk to yourself. I can't do it. What should I say? How am I going to do this? Uh, what, what are other people going to think? Um, uh, how, so all these things going on. 
you were engaged right away. And then you come out and you look at the results in, in the chat and there's an immediate connection to other folks um, because we've all been through the same thing. So this is an example of how the skills that make improv people successful, the ability to go through the game itself is what helps you understand yourself and understand others. So let me go through a couple of these slides. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a few slides. I'll do full screen and then um, play some games, which we are going to play some games, but I got to move this around. So slideshow from current slide. This is pretty much what the plan is. We'll have some games. We'll introduce the directions. My advice is play these games as much as possible because it's a practice. It's not, you can't just learn from one time. The beauty about improv is that you can never play the same game twice. Every time it's different. And we're gonna explore the learning opportunities that these games allow. And this is not working again. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna go here. Here's the theory, a little bit of theory. The skills that make improvisers successful are cognitive and available to us as a practice. The more you play, the more you get uh, muscle memory, the more you build neural pathways, the more you let go of the self-talk that keeps you from taking the risk. And people say, well, well, uh, we'll get into that then no one here. Improv looks like a theater uh, game. It is essentially, but if you think about it in terms of life, the, it, it's, it's a concept called applied improv. Improv is a mission-driven, goal-directed team activity where each person is at various times both leader and follower. So the reason that this works so well as engagement is that even if you're not leading the activity, you're involved in the activity. Um, many of you have seen improv, correct? You, how do you feel when you're sitting in the audience, when you're watching improvisers on stage, are you engaged or not? You can unmute and, and tell me. I'm engaged. Definitely engaged. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm engaged. That's the, that's the magic of this. You don't have to be playing the game to be engaged in the game. And that means for us as presenters, as entrepreneurs, as, as, as relationship pe people in relationships, we can make conclusions. We can ask questions without having everybody volunteer. And that's the big problem for most folks. I don't wanna stand out. I don't wanna volunteer because people are, they feel they're not safe when actually they're just uncomfortable. And one of the big, the big benefits of this as an engagement tool is it helps people feel comfortable about telling the truth. Uh, whoops, I think I lost, I lost. Uh, uh, yeah, we got that. Let's play a game. I'm going to shut this now for a second. And I'm going to ask, now I'm gonna ask for a volunteer, but you, no one has to volunteer. Because all I want you to do is monitor your self-talk. But I am going to ask for a, a a volunteer to come up and play a game that you and I are going to play together. You cannot fail. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun and you can't be wrong. And uh, everyone who's ever volunteered for me has survived and gone back to other things. So I'm in. Who, who's that? Carolyn's in. I see. I, I saw Lisa first. Well, Lisa's, so, Lisa's first. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, it, it, it's it's a, um, a challenge with Zoom. So um, Roger, would, would you uh, spotlight Lisa and I, we're gonna uh, play the game or so that everyone can see us? Lisa, thank you for volunteering. Um, have you played uh, uh, improv games? Have you played a game called One Word at a Time before? Um, not One Word at a Time, I've played improv games. Okay, I've... okay. Um, let, let me ask the, the folks, give me one minute, please, Lisa. Those of you who did not volunteer, and it's perfectly all right, 
I, I, I would like to know what went through your mind? What was your self-talk that kept your hand from, be, from going up? This is not about right or wrong. This is an objective um, um, investigation. Please put in the chat, what kept your hand from going up? I can tell you why my hand did go up. Well, let, I'll, I'll ask you that in, in a moment. Just, just let someone else take the stage. I'm sleepy. I like to watch other people sometimes. It makes perfect sense. Why did you volunteer, Lisa? To stretch my comfort zone. Stretch your comfort zone. <laughs> fear, uh, Roger says fear of being humiliated. Let me ask those folks who did not volunteer. How did you feel when you saw that Lisa had volunteered? What was the feeling you had when you saw that somebody else had volunteered? Relief, phew. Uh, I thought, good for her, envy. So he, he, here's a, a perfect example of how you're able to use these engagement um, uh, games by not even having everyone volunteer. And I use this game. This is the first game that I use when I teach leadership, team building, or communication. Because right now, what we saw is Lisa acting as a leader for this group. She did it for her own reason. But leadership is not so much about what you do, i.e. step up, as how what you do makes other people feel. And one of the ways to engage everybody, now her status goes up. She's made a lot of other people feel, feel comfortable. Great for her. And, 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 and she's connected. So um, this is, I think, the beauty of this work is, is that whatever we do has a starter question for how, what did you think and how did you feel and what might you do differently next time? We have those three heart-centered questions that come out of the first game, the second game that we played. So Lisa, we're gonna play a game called One Word at a Time. You and I are gonna tell a story that's never been told before, and we're gonna do this one word at a time, okay? Uh, let's allow each other to use the words period, question mark, exclamation point to indicate the end of a sentence, but that can't be our turn. So when it's my turn, I can't go period as a way of abdicating responsibility, right? Okay. Um, somebody put in the chat the title of a story that's never been told before, and Lisa and I will tell you that story. Just don't think too much. Just wing it. Title of a story that's never been told. I like cheese. That's the name of our story. Lisa, one word at a time. Do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go first? Um, you go first. Once. I. Found. Several. Pieces of cheese. Period or, okay, yep. period. Go ahead. Jarlsberg is absolutely delicious with bread. Exclamation point. <laughs> Go Great. Ahead. Also, go well with Yalsburg and champagne. Yes. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Let's enjoy our afternoon delight. Period. <laughs> exclamation point. The end. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> so, um, what, uh, what, what was that like for you? So the question I, I asked now, were you engaged as the audience? How did that happen? And it could be, put it in the chat or, or, or you, could, you could call it out. I'm, I'm a fairly agnostic facilitator. Um, Anticipation. Say that again, please. Yeah. Anticipation. Why did why were you anticipating? What's coming next? What are they going to say? And 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 what what drove your anticipation? Why why did you care? Is 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 the 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 blunt way to put that? 
of is this going to be interesting? I'm waiting to see. Yeah. So notice how engaged uh, you were because there's a curiosity. And the reason you felt engaged, partly, was because the pressure was off. Because Lisa had volunteered. So once she volunteered, she took your place in this group. And you are now curious as you, many of you might have been saying, boy, I wish I was up there now. I know what I would say. You were actually playing along. You were engaged on an emotional and an intellectual level. That's one of the beauties of this, uh, of this kind of approach. So you can see, because many of you are entrepreneurs, you work with people, your coaches, you, you, you can see how the game itself sparks questions that uh, whatever your outcome needs to be. You know, um, other thoughts on, on um, yeah, we nominated Lisa as tribute, exactly. <laughs> you can take credit for that. Lisa did well. Um, uh, Lisa, how was it for you? Um, it was fun. And I, um, the pressure on my, my put on myself was to not always be the A or I or you and to be able to like be um, more interactive with different words. And where did that pressure come from in, in your own mind? Oh, myself, my people pleasing, fear of judgment ways, <laughs> <laughs> which is, you know, a lifelong work of, um, of growth and why I jumped in and did, you know, volunteered. So th and thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Again, let me point out the power of this engaging activity. I, I don't know how many other people Lisa are, is close to here, but she gave a very heartfelt, vulnerable and honest response to the question because we asked her about the game. The game for us as adults, my experience, and I've worked with a lot of people over, over the years. When, when we adults play a game, we are able to lose our defensiveness and talk about the way we play in, in, in real true time. So I, I, I think that, so Lisa, I'm hearing, had, has, she was sharing with us her self-talk. We could look into her mind. And the beauty of this, this activity is that she can now recognize that maybe next time she plays, or maybe she will get this idea, but wait a minute, it makes absolutely no difference if I always say the word the. If that's what it comes up, I'm only responsible for one word. And, my, and, 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 and I am a part of the team. Any other thoughts or, or comments? I'd like to hear some responses. Where have those ideas come from? Do you create them? Julie, could you uh, expound on that question a little bit? Where do these, uh, where have these ideas come from? Do you create them? Yeah, um, the improv ideas. Did you get them from a book? Did you make them up nope. yourself? Yeah, uh, this is my experience. Uh, I've written a book. I've written a lot on this. Um, what I am is a facilitator who uses improv as a process. So that that's my skill, is to be able They're to... They're hilarious. I'm sorry? They're hilarious. <laughs> it's fun, for sure. Um, Greg says, loves, lose defensiveness and show authenticity. Lisa, what allowed you to lose the defensiveness in, in this group so quickly? Um, well, I guess it's just, I'm very, I'm working on this. Like, so it's really in the front of my mind. And um, like, I was, you know, my challenge, my intention right now is to do something every day that, that scares me. And so it was like, I'm doing this for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with that reminder of, you know, I have to, it's not about what anybody else thinks. It's, you know, cause I can't control what anybody else thinks. So it's, it's, exactly. you know. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is so, um, Holly, this is so applicable in situations where you're attempting to get a conversation started with, in a group or with a group, exactly. Yeah, cause you're asking, you're almost, um, 
getting people uh, off off balance a little bit. They're, they don't know what to expect. They're, they're, they're usually with the right question, the, the, the traditional questions. And this is something that's very different. It brings out the playfulness as well as the defensiveness. It's a shared experience. Uh, any other thoughts, please put it in the chat uh, on, on uh, what you were feeling, seeing, experiencing, watching it or playing along. Um, and we could go. So here's the story. It's, it's called One Word at a Time. Uh, the goal is to make up a story that's never been turned. Each person adds one word in order. You, you got that. My experience is that it, it works best with uh, five or six people, no more. It works good with twos, threes, and fours. Um, beyond six or seven, people lose track of, of, of keeping the story. Um, in terms of engagement, um, I, 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 I want to show you a number of games, but this is very doable in breakouts. So if you get people in threes, twos, and threes, put them into breakouts, give them the, a, a, a title, let them go off for, for three or four minutes, play the game, and come back and talk about their experience, you have a very um, uh, deeper connection uh, to the folks. Izzy, do you yes? want me to remove Spotlight from Lisa? Yes, please. Uh, the name of my book, by the way, is Playing Along, um, 37 Group Learning Activities Barred from Improv Theater. Uh, it's been out. It's been out a while. I'm glad to say it's been in print since 1997. I have a a, a new book coming out in a, in a while, but we'll 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 talk about that uh, and, and another time. So let's let let's play some more. The theory that I have about why this is so powerful is the way we adults play is the way we truly are. We, as I mentioned, we lose our defensiveness to a large extent. So you reveal your true self when you play. Um, if you're a competitive person, you'll be a competitive person, even if the game is not, does not lend itself to competition. If you're a control person, you'll control things even though you just say, that's the way I am. I'm a type A personality. The advantage of this is the engagement you have is with yourself in this game, whether you're watching or playing. And you can, as, as Lisa so clearly showed out, you can explore the conscious and unconscious thoughts you have. And the questions are always the, generally the, the productive questions about thoughts, feelings, and actions. What did I think? What did I feel? What did I do? That's the basis of all this, all this work. <coughs> it's it's the, the key to facilitation. I wanna to talk to you about the skills. I mentioned the skills. Improvisers are successful in my book and mine because of four skills that they develop. And they develop them through constantly practicing the games, not to come out with the answers, but to go through the process. It's very much like learning any sport or any game or any process. The first is that improvisers learn about staying present. The past is gone, the future is unknown, now is the only time we have to act. People say, oh, improvisers, they think so fast on their feet. I, I, I have a different approach. I don't think improvisers think fast, they act fast, meaning they don't spend a lot of time thinking. And therefore the action makes them move forward. The second skill is the difference uh, between acceptance and agreement. Improvisers understand that they may not uh, agree with everything. They may not expect everything that's coming to them. They need to deal with it. So there were times that I didn't know what the word was gonna to be to me. There were times Lisa didn't know what word was gonna to come to her. She dealt with it. She accepted reality. Improvisers deal with reality. And that's another reason it's such a good skill for these days. People talk about the new normal. Well, there ain't no new normal. It's just gonna be the normal that moves on. The new normal, the old normal, it, it is what it is, and we got to deal with it. An improviser deals with it. The third skill is trust. Improvisers trust process, which means we're able to suspend judgment about whether things are good or bad in the moment. Is this a good story? Am I doing the right word? Is it, it's just keep going. You got one word. That's all you're supposed to do. 
and the combination of the three of presence, acceptance, and trust leads to spontaneity. That's how we're able to act quickly, deal with what we got, and pivot, pivot really quickly. The acceptance piece, you may have heard of a concept known as yes and. Yes and is probably the most common um, use of uh, uh, improv uh, principles. Yes and is simply, yes, you think that, and here's what I think. Even if you disagree, it's very different than yes, but. Yes, you think that, and I think differently, so let's explore where that difference is, is very different than someone saying, yes, you think that, but I think differently. So one of us has to be right and wrong. And if we talk about um, engagement, how do you engage with people who have different opinions? How do you engage with people who you don't understand where they're coming from unless you get into a dialogue with them? And the only way to stay in a dialogue is to keep talking. Yes, you think that, and I think differently. So let's look at this. Yeah, you think that, and I don't see how that could be. Can you show it to me? The yes and allows you to stay in dialogue longer. And that means you have a better chance of coming to a, a, a realization. The skill that we saw in one word story is called the point of concentration. What's the smallest bit of information I need to focus on in order to move forward towards my goal? In this case, all improv games have a point of concentration. It's all you got to focus on. In this case, it's just one word. That's all you got to focus on. Your word, the word you heard, the word you're going to give. You don't have to worry about the end. You don't have to worry about the beginning. That frees us up so much. That allows us to be present and that allows us to move forward. Izzy, can you repeat the name of your book, please? The name of the book is Playing Along. I, I will put it in the chat. And it's available on Amazon, I would guess? It's available on Amazon. It's better available uh, through me. You can get it through Amazon. Um, and uh, you can also get it through me uh, on the website. But yes, it is available. Playing Along. 37 group learning activities. I, I'm not far from improvisation theater. I'm, I'm a bad speller, so I'm going to just assume you're going to know it's from improv, from improv theater. I'll put your website on the, in the chat. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, so I'm going to show you one more thing, then we'll play another game. Well, yes, and we, we did yes, and we, yes, but trusting the process, suspending judgment. We talked about that. And now I'm going to ask, I'm going to stop the share, and I'm going to ask for two people to step up, and I'm going to teach you another game. I see Lisa. Do you want me to spotlight Lisa? Yes, please. And one more. Uh, Holly. So Lisa and Holly. So this is a game called Rent. Where is Holly? I don't see, I'm gonna close this here. Hey, do I see? I see Lisa and I see Holly. Okay, um, I don't see Holly as pinned yet. You do now. I do now. Hi. So Lisa, Holly, this is a game called Rant. <laughs> and um, the idea is that one person is going to rant for, for 45 seconds and I will keep time. You can rant about anything you want big ideas of global warming, small ideas. Why don't people put uh, carriages back in the, in the shopping cart uh, co corral, um, traffic jams, whatever you want, 45 seconds, just let it out. The other person is just going to listen. It's not gonna help you, not gonna say, not gonna fix it, not gonna even commiserate. Listen as if they were a statue. And what they're listening for is your highest ethical principles that are driving your rant. 
In other words, what's the goodness in you that 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 drives this this frustration? So I'm going to and each of you will have a turn to do to do each one. So Holly, Lisa, uh, choose which who wants to go first as the ranter. Oh, I'll go first. Holly is the ranter. Lisa, um, you're going to listen for the 45 seconds. I will keep time. And you're going to listen at when it's done. We're going to ask you, what's her highest ethical principles? What's what's the goodness that's driving her to, to feel this way? Holly, are you ready? I'm ready. Well, then go. I'm a very experienced rancher. That's why I decided to go first. There's a few things that really bother me in terms of how people behave because they affect me. And perhaps I take it too personally. Shouldn't. I'm working on that. One of the things that really bothers me is if I send you a text and you make me wait 24 hours before an answer. And you know what that answer is? Okay. That's it. Nothing more has been said or a little smiley face or something. I'm not really into emojis. I don't understand them. I'm obviously a little old school in terms of that, but I want you to communicate. And if all you have to say is okay, please get it out there within a minute of what I have sent Time's you. Time's up. Thank you very much. Whew. Now, Lisa, would you take a, 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 some time and, and organize your thoughts and tell us what, what, what's her highest principles? What, 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 what is the goodness coming out there? What does she want that makes the world better? I think what I got from her was a sense of responsiveness, acknowledgement, or reciprocity. Okay. Anything else? Um, no, those were the top three that kind of came to my mind. Okay. Holly, how did that feel to hear that? Uh, a, a validation, actually, of how I was feeling. So that was, the, you're absolutely correct. I wanted to be recognized. Yeah. So uh, now let's let's switch. Lisa, when you're uh -oh. ready, um, uh, you, you let me know. <laughs> and, and Let me stop this and uh, reset. Uh, Holly, you're going to be the listener now, and, and uh, Lisa will rant for 45 seconds when we say go. Lisa, are you ready? I'm ready. Go for it. All right. I would say my biggest pet peeve is driving down the freeway and someone's not going at the speed that I'm going. In addition to switching lanes without blinkers, they just run over in front of me and then I have to slam on my brakes and say, gosh, darn it. But then sometimes I stop and say, well, wait, just slow down. That's probably your angel. But I just really wish someone would put a blinker on or at least go the same speed as me in the fast lane on the freeway so I can get to my ultimate destination. That's really my biggest pet peeve. All right, thank you. Holly, when, when, you, when, when you've uh, collated your thoughts, um, what's her highest principle here? What's, what's the goodness in it? Uh, she is looking for people when they're driving to be considerate. She's looking for consideration. You are, uh, don't be such a narcissist. Think that there's other people out there driving using that same space maybe you should uh, you should look around you and be considerate of that. Thank that you. How did that, how did that how did that feel to hear that? It felt very good. She was spot on. <laughs> yes, you know, I, I have to say yes. I, th these games are just so amazing in that you notice that all we've talked about is heart-centered true feelings and validation. Yeah. even if it's if, if if it's about our imperfections and the games themselves have no real world consequences so i think that allows us to open up and really engage with with, with our understanding i'd like to hear some other uh, 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 thoughts and, and and comments on 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 this game and what it was it like to watch it and some of your insights and how you might be able to uh, to use it i was also thinking we are all the same. Your rant was about driving. My rant was about texting. We all want to be recognized. I think that that's kind of an important thing to realize no matter what situation you're in. It, it's one of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's oh, okay. really, it, it, it really is. So if yeah. you want to, let, let's say you were, you were working with a client or you're, you're trying to pitch to a, a company, um, this is an, a, a way to start a discussion 
about how connected we are yeah. and how how we're, we may have different whatever the the details are but we're we're, we're the same and and we we're connecting we, you want to connect on something um uh, jason was uh, you said you were talking about your your rant uh, and you can relate to both of them so the other engagement is notice that not it's not about one or the other it's it, it's a back and forth kind of thing sometimes i i can relate to let's say with the storytelling sometimes i could relate to the, the giving the word i want to give a word and sometimes i'm happy just to get something because that sparks something so remember you're both leader and follower the, the, mm -hmm. these two games have, have have shown how the engagement is not just one way and it's not top down it's equitable everyone the status is equal i'm equal because i don't know how they're going to turn out I make the offer and I don't know. I don't know how it was going to turn out. Um, Valerie, a beautiful demonstration of listening for acceptance and agreement. No right or wrong, good or bad. That's what I like about this, this game, the rant. I had to train myself to get off my coaching hat and my, 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 my belief I can help people because by giving them advice, when sometimes all I want, to, all the, all I want from people is to be heard, one, and two, I want people to be able to say to me, you sound so angry, but it's because I think you really want people to get along. Yeah. And having that validation of my deeper, my deeper reality comes out in these silly games. And I don't know exactly how or why, but they do. Yeah. Who else has a thought, uh, a comment on either of the activities? Julie? So I love the rant because everybody complains but this made it entertaining because when she was saying don't be such a narcissist for half a second i thought she was talking to lisa and telling her don't do that <laughs> not at all <laughs> it was the drivers around uh lisa that were the narcissists i did figure that out <laughs> i think that this is a, i love this game and it's very hard for me because I try to use this game to try to understand people I disagree with or who disagree with me, that logically I can't comprehend where they come from. I'm still struggling with that, but I think that there's something here where if I can suspend judgment and, and, and try to find the, 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 the core goodness in the human being, I have a chance of, of survival. Um, that's my goal. Um, and I'm playing at the same time. So um, other thoughts or questions? I've, I've... Do you want me to on Spotlight? Good yes, please. Yes, please. Thanks. Uh, somebody else have a thought? I, I... No? Okay. Then uh, I have to play, play some more. Let's play some more. So rant. Uh, and again, you, you you will have the the video, so you'll be able to see these. Um, it here's one minute. I shorten it to forty five seconds uh, because I, I'm 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 learning as I do this. It's a relatively new activity for me that forty five seconds and a minute um, serve the same function. So I can save some time, especially when I send people to breakouts. So forty five seconds. You could probably do 30 seconds, but right now I'm doing 45 seconds. Six words. <laughs> <laughs> it's words clothed in emotions. Okay, we're gonna have uh, two more people. Uh, I'm not gonna show you this game yet. Okay, two more, two more volunteers. People who have not volunteered yet, please. Um, who am I seeing? Uh, Greg, Greg, and we need one more. Come on, let's go. Jason, Jason. Okay. Jason, so come on. let me give you, let, let, let me share with you a, um, a facilitator understanding, uh, for when you do groups and you ask for volunteers. I said to you earlier on, I'm going to ask for volunteers, but you do not have to volunteer. And I mean that. Um, and if no one volunteered, I would wait a little bit. 
and or else I would go on to something else. Again, it, it, when, when it's my turn, I, I, I'm in control. What I have found human nature is that if I stand, if I wait long enough, somebody will volunteer if only to ease their own discomfort. Oh, really? Now they'll do it for me, but there's a certain discomfort that people feel for the situation. So I know that that I I, I can and and this is again a facilitator a secret. I don't know if it's a secret, but if you want to do engaging activities, you can be really you can make people feel safe by saying very early on, "I'm going to ask for volunteers," but no one is required to volunteer. I really mean that. If you don't want to volunteer, you don't have to. And then you ask for a volunteer and you give people a chance to come out of their shell. And, and how, why they, remember the self-talk. This is all about self-talk. The self-talk is, oh, he, he's suffering up there or I'm uncomfortable or uh, let's get it on with whatever the reason is. And then they come up. And everybody else goes, yay, you know. <laughs> so that's that, that, that that's that's the secret. So who do we have? We have, uh, we're going to pin Jason and Greg. Okay, my friends, this is a game called Gibberish Poet. <laughs> there are two roles in this game. One of them is a poet who speaks only in gibberish, <laughs> which is gibberish is a language that that doesn't exist but sounds like a language. So it's not really blah, 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 blah. It's more like So one of them will tell us their poem in gibberish and the other will translate into English. And the way they're going to do this is the poet will speak, uh, let's say a line or two, maybe three, not too many. And then the translator will translate again because the translator has total control and the gibberish person has total control the idea is and the secret to this is to watch each other if we were doing it in person i'd, I'd remind you to look at each other's body language so the, the it works best when you see each other as as, as team members creating a a shared project doesn't mean you know that that's all i need to tell you so but i will say you have to pick who's going to be who. Uh, who one is the gibberish poet and one of them is the world's best gibberish translator oh my what do you like uh greg what would you like to be i'm gonna let you make the option okay i'll be the gibberish person i've done this before <laughs> Well, that might be a good fit because I'm sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you're the world's best translator, so uh, we'll, we'll take what we got. Try and listen carefully. L listen carefully and, and pay attention to them. Turn up my speakers. <laughs> um, and again, the, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, uh, my pleasure to introduce uh, the Nobel Prize winning uh, the gibberish poet, and um, uh, Zoom's most popular gibberish translator, um, Jason and Greg. So um, please begin at your leisure. Da, 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 and yeah, but the visa, the 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 you're the translator. I went down to the beach and there were some big waves and the waves crashed onto the shore. And they came in and they broke down all the 
palm trees and the sun came out and everything dried up and we went out surfing and the waves kept coming in and we surfed on out and the waves came in and we surfed until dusk. <laughs> there you go. I was talking about water, actually. Well, um, yeah. So let's let's get some feedback from the uh, Dorothy. Are you raising your hand for for a comment? <laughs> no, I I would just clap and how how Greg. I mean, Greg is the best uh, a poet translate a poem translator ever. What makes him the best, in your opinion? <laughs> well, I mean, he. The, the translation matches uh, Jason's body language. Yeah, yeah. And and the tone of his voice, his voice, you know, is rhythmic. It it goes with the wave and the surf and and his eyes. I mean, everything about about him being a translator is just awesome. Truly, world best translator. <laughs> Thank you. Other comments? Other thoughts on uh, your, your experience? Well, writing a great poet makes it easy. Translations easy. <laughs> well, uh, um, let me let me get some other. You you both committed to the roles. Lovely. Valerie says that's that is a key there. The 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 commitment to the 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 process. Remember, it's trust the process, presence, acceptance, and trust. This is an example of how when you commit to the process, it's it, it you you co-create the, the the outcome. And I would say I I I I'm, I'm impressed in that watching Greg, um, his first reaction was, in my opinion, and because this was my reaction, he's going. Jason's going on a long time. I said two or three sentences, and he's doing. He's going on. And then Greg brought it up. For me, I heard, I didn't expect that. I expected two or three sentences. And now we've got like a, a monologue and, and your ability. So that's the improv, that, that's the engagement piece. He feels it, it wasn't expected. It wasn't even what I had offered, but his ability to take what, yes and, that's the yes and. Cool. Yes, I did. I, I, there was 17 lines instead of three. And I'm going to deal with it because I'm committed to the process and I'm committed to the team. I, 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 the, watching the, your hands, Greg, um, mimicking Jason's. And I think Jason was really helpful when he's using his hands to emphasize certain pieces that helps Greg's creativity make, make sense of it. Um, you want to talk about a team building program. You want to talk about uh, talking to people about how they they, they 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 judge other people or how they feel victimized or whatever it may be. How how do you be successful when 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 you're thrown a curveball? You know th th that's it. Um, so let me get from Greg and Jason, and then if there, there are other people. I um, didn't actually hear the three lines, so sorry why I went too long, but I didn't hear well, the three well, lines. <laughs> That's okay. And let me let me talk about the engagement piece here. Very often we give instructions. We think we're clear. We're very precise. Not everybody hears them the same way. You got to deal with reality. Yes, and you can't say, well, wait a minute. Uh, you know, and, and as a facilitator, my challenge is how long do I let them go on? And how do or do I let them go on? So I have my own struggles here. You see, uh, yeah. you, got, uh, you got five minutes. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to have a LinkedIn Live or something to answer some of these questions. I have one more game for you. And, and um, here's, here's what it is. We're going to write a group poem because we just did so great. So um, I'm going to pick a title. And I'm going to put it in the chat. And I'm going to, let's say we get uh, um, the joy of living so the power now what what we're going to do is everybody's going to write one line to this poem and the name of the poem is the joy of living you're going to write your line one line only in the chat but do not hit chat do not hit enter until everybody is in and once everybody's in and i will ask you then we will all hit enter at the same time and the poem will be randomized and we have, uh, what do we have? We have 29 people. 
So we're probably going to have uh, maybe, uh, I would say probably three to five poems. We'll see. So everybody understand? Okay, put one line to a, any any part of the poem, doesn't matter, the joy of living. And when you're done, raise your hand so I'll know. How many words? One line, one sentence. It's up to you. All right. And those of you who are not on video, I'm going to give you a countdown that you'll have to do it in, I would say, 20 seconds. One, two. Joey, your hand is up. Do you have a question? No, he's, he's just done. All right, everybody, I'm going to count to three. Hit enter. One, two, three. Okay, the poem. And of course you can save the chat, so you will have this. Um, here we go. The joy of living, being still to take in the beauty of all living things. Where is that? With sweatpants on is the best. And when the sun comes up, Leap up, food and wine are together, the joy of living. There is beauty in living, life's a journey. The air, the sea, the mountain, the forest, such beauty. How blessed am I to live the life I'm living. I'm grateful for the joy. Swimming, dancing are the best activities to do. Smiling, laughing, and warm fuddies, fuzzies. That's the stuff of life. On top of spaghetti, all covered with cheese, sex on the beach, <laughs> the warmth of a hug, laughing and loving and serving to feel the joy, be open, to feel the pain, making memories with those you know and don't know. Satisfying is the breeze. There you go. The Joy of Living, written by this, this wonderful collaboration. Um, Again, you want to engage people, you can do it. Uh, if, if you're doing it in person, you have people write stuff on, on a piece of paper, a scrap of paper, get all the papers together and pull them at random. On Zoom, this is a great activity um, uh, to run on Zoom. So um, we are running out of time. Um, I hope that we can connect on uh, LinkedIn. Um, Let's see, we, we got all the information, you will have this. Um, and what I would just say is uh, contact info for me. Um, and I guess, do we have time for questions? Well, we've got uh, three minutes. And okay. do you, why don't you make your offer? Then we'll conclude and we'll answer questions outside of the video. Okay. Um, my offer is uh, to connect on LinkedIn or via email, izzy at izzyg.com. And uh, if you'd like to be on my, my email list, um, it, it's on my website. I will be doing some free programs on engagement. I'm just launching a, a website called betterfacilitating.com. It's not up yet, but it is very much about this, this philosophy and process. So please either sign up on LinkedIn uh, go to my website, izzyg.com, and sign up for the newsletter, um, or reach out to me. Um, and uh, I'm happy to spend 10 or 15 minutes with, with any of you uh, individually um, to answer any questions. And I'm also thinking of, of maybe doing a LinkedIn uh, Live or a LinkedIn uh, program on questions. So if you have questions about this, email me. I'll collect them and then get them back to you in, 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 in some group way. Okay, that's it. Izzy, on behalf of uh, EIN 74,000 solopreneur members in 35 major metropolitan areas in North America, I thank you hugely. In oh, you're welcome. 10 years of running uh, uh, EIN's uh, meetups, uh, I'm 
can honestly say that nobody has addressed this topic. This topic is very front of mind. As, as we more and more use conferencing facilities, that the whole challenge of engagement uh, just has gone up and up and up. And uh, I really do thank you, not only for the content you shared, but how you shared it. I am absolutely convinced that every one of us was 100% engaged. And after all, isn't that what your talk is all about? About the heart, Roger, it's about the heart. <laughs>